Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be talking about PT school. So this is actually not my first PT related video. I did a video with an account called pre-med takeovers. I did a like Snapchat um, takeover that turned into a YouTube video and I talked all about PT school. That was two years ago. I was in my second semester out of nine and now I am wrapping up my ninth semester of PT school and I've learned a whole lot since then and there are things that I want to share with y'all. So Today's video is going to be a little bit about the process of getting into PT school and then I'll make other videos depending on requests maybe based on study tips for PT school, how to survive PT school, studying for the boards, job hunts, all that kind of stuff because now I'm in the position of studying for my boards and getting ready to look for jobs which is really crazy and exciting. Um, can't believe I made it this far but, but here we are. So a little backstory on me. I went to undergrad at the University of Georgia and then I am currently at Emory University in Atlanta for their Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Again, I'm a third year in my ninth semester about to graduate so that is all very exciting. Um, and so this video is I guess more addressed to the people that are in college maybe or high school. I actually get a lot of questions um, from that first video about you know what do I do when can I start getting ready to apply for school or what do I need to be doing prior to applying? And those are all good questions because it's something that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about and so that's why I'm here to talk about it. Um, one thing that is important is make sure you start your shadowing hours early in college. In high school, if you shadow, it's great like to kind of get that experience and you'll be able to talk about it in your interviews, but it won't count. So in college is when your shadowing hours count. So I recommend, what I did was I started my freshman year and during like each semester of school, I found some kind of shadowing opportunity, whether that was, you know, one day of the week for like two hours at a time and over, you know, the however many weeks of the semester I accumulated 20 or so hours. Um, or if I did like a winter break kind of shadowing where I shadowed like every day for winter break or you know a week during winter break and accumulated a lot of hours the point is that you want to have at least like 10 or 20 hours at least at each setting so you don't want to just like shadow one day for four hours and count that like that won't work so make sure you have at least i would recommend 20 hours at each setting so pick a few semesters in in college or maybe you decide to do it over summer um, and just kind of spread them out that way it doesn't feel like at the very end of school you have to get all these hours at once Another thing to keep in mind is you're likely going to do your PT school applications the summer before your senior year of college. So you want to make sure your shadowing is for the most part, you've done a lot of it before that point. You are able to put on your application intended shadowing. So if you have like a verbal agreement with a clinic that they're going to let you shadow your senior year, you can put that clinic, put the amount of hours you anticipate getting, but it's still better, I think, to have a lot of hours already before you apply. I don't know the standard um, that they want you to have. I don't want to like speak for any admissions, you know, at universities because I have nothing to do with that. But I think I had between two and 300 hours. And for me, I think that what's more important than having a lot of hours is having hours in different kinds of settings. So if all of your hours so you have 500 hours of shadowing and every single one is in an outpatient orthopedic clinic. I don't think that that is going to be as beneficial to you as if you have 200 hours across a variety of settings. So what I mean by that is you want to have some shadowing hours in some kind of inpatient setting. Inpatient means like it's somewhere that um, that patients are staying overnight. So it could be inpatient rehab, which are typically in a hospital. Sometimes they're like a different wing of the hospital or they're like right outside of the hospital. So there's inpatient rehab facilities and then there is acute care, which is basically just your normal hospital PT. Also long-term care facilities, those are all like inpatient. So you wanna have some kind of shadowing hours in at least one of those. Just because a lot of times people think that physical therapy is only outpatient orthopedic. And when you shadow in different settings that are also, like if you shadow an inpatient, it shows that you've seen that kind of side of physical therapy and you still want to apply to PT school. Um, programs want and will require you to do your clinical rotations in a variety of settings. You won't be able to do all of your rotations in ortho. That's just not how they want to make you a well-rounded clinician and you have to be in order to graduate. Um, so it's, you know, it's good if you've already shadowed in those places because then you'll do, you'll be a little bit more prepared for your clinical rotations and the program will know that you have experience in 
in that kind of set. So I recommend having a diverse settings that you shadowed in. So like I said, have some inpatient, have some outpatient ortho, maybe try to get in like a neuro clinic that could be inpatient or outpatient. Inpatient rehab is technically usually neuro. Um, you'll see a lot of neuro diagnoses, but there's also outpatient neuro clinics. And that's what I did. I really enjoyed that. If you can get in some kind of peds um, clinic, that'd be great too. I didn't have any peds shadowing and I never did a peds clinical. So, you know, that kind of limits me on would I apply for a pediatric job? I don't know because I have not experienced it yet. So keep that in mind. Like the more you can diversify yourself, diversify your shadowing, the better. Um, Cause then you'll at least have been exposed to it. If maybe you don't get a clinical rotation in that setting, then you'll be exposed to it when you go to apply for jobs. Um, so make sure you have a decent amount of hours, make sure they are spread across settings. Those are really important things for applying to PT school. Another thing I've heard from um, some schools is that they don't want to see on your essay, a lot of schools will require you to write a supplemental essay. So what I mean by that is that when you apply to PT school, you apply in PT CAS. It's a website and it's like a portal. So you fill out all of your basic stuff, your transcript, your grades, your job experience, your extracurriculars, all that stuff goes in one portal. And you pick which schools you send it to, which is great. It just sends them all to all the places you want to apply. You will have to pay like per school, but also you, some schools require an additional application. So you send that in and then they want an additional application, which usually is just a couple of essay questions. Um, and if a question comes up, like, why do you want to be a PT? Try to figure out a more creative answer than, you know, you were an athlete and you hurt yourself once and a PT helped you get better and so you wanted to do the same for others because that story is really overused and that might be why you wanna be a PT. So I'm not saying lie about it by any means, but just make sure you maybe embellish a little bit more on it um, and don't make that like your entire story and your entire reason for wanting to do physical therapy because that is um, kind of a lot of people's story. So make sure you have a unique story um, another thing that's really great to do before you go on interviews is practice questions that they might ask you and you'll get some kind of off the wall questions like I had one school ask me if I didn't have hands like what would I have instead of hands and somebody said like or I don't know if they asked me or somebody else and I think somebody said like a, a fork and a spoon which I thought was funny but so just think about off the wall questions they might ask but really think about the questions that they probably will ask like your strengths and weaknesses why you want to be a physical therapist what um, maybe a memorable shadowing experience that you've had, um, you know, what you think makes you stand out as an applicant, why you want to go to their specific program, things like that. Those are good interview questions to kind of think of and practice answering. You want to have your answer be thought out because this is important. Um, another thing is make sure also that you look professional at your interview. Um, it's usually a business professional, so I wore a suit. I wore my mom's suit actually because I don't have one and um, flats because you might have to do a campus tour so you might not want to wear heels. My first year roommate in PT school she wore giant heels at the interview and I will like never forget that because um, she's it was just funny she's really short so she wore these really high heels but anyways okay so make sure you have good shadowing hours in lots of different settings. Make sure you have a unique story. Practice your interview questions. Um, also make sure you get good grades in your science classes. Um, I don't necessarily mean like chemistry. Uh, I didn't have the best grades in chemistry in undergrad. Georgia's uh, chem program or their chem classes are really hard. I didn't do great in those, but made up for it with biology and anatomy. Anatomy is really important, really what matters. And then your, if you take like kinesiology classes in undergrad, those are also going to be important for PT school. So make sure you do well in those classes. Um, and then also try to be involved in college. I don't think that my resume necessarily was the most stellar number wise, um, like grade wise, uh, shadowing hours wise, GRE wise. Like, I don't know that I was way ahead of everybody else, but I did do a lot of things in college. So I was in Greek life. I held a job through all of college, um, pretty much. I was in various clubs relating to PT and just medicine in general, um, different things like that so that they can see, wow, you've you know, you went through college doing classes, working, being involved, and you t you managed your time and balanced all of those things. Because one thing that will make you successful in PT school is if you can manage your time and balance it well, because you don't have a lot of time when you're in PT school. So you want to show them that 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 is a good qu 
quality that you possess is good time management, good discipline, hardworking um, person. That's what you want them to see in you. So anyways, those are my like little, that's like a, a roundup of some tips to help you kind of get ready to get into PT school. I will do a more in depth maybe about like the application process, about where I applied. Just let me know what y'all would like to see. Um, I would like to do kind of a reflection recap of my three years. And I can also do specific to Emory's program if that is something of interest to y'all. So you just let me know in the comments below. Um, other than that, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all in my next video.